Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Making a Game the Desmos Graphing Calculator series. Last time we covered developing level 5 of our game. In this video, I'll cover optimization. There are two main types of optimizations that I want to cover in this episode. Readability optimizations and performance optimizations. Readability optimizations deal with the simplicity and organization of the equations. Performance optimizations deal with, well, the performance of the game. Let's begin with something that I think is pretty sloppy. Repeating code. You can see how many lines I have that are very similar and fulfill similar functions. For instance, this line is detecting the collision for the first enemy, and this line is detecting the collision for the second enemy. We can make it a lot more clear as to what these lines are doing by using functions. Functions in Desmos are going to be very handy. A mathematical function takes in an input and does some work on that input. It could be squaring it, adding 1, dividing it by 2, or whatever else. We can use some variable to give the function a name, and pass an input into it within parentheses. An input doesn't just have to be one number, though. We can separate values with a comma to add more inputs. Now the function can do work on both of these values in order to give us a value back. I'll write a quick demo to show exactly how this works. I'll make some function, which I'll call f here. Now in parentheses, I'll write both of our inputs, x and y. These are two values which will be passed into the function. Let's say our function adds these two values together. We can write this as x plus y. Really? That's it? Now let's try using the function. If we wanted to know what 3 plus 4 is, we can say f of 3 comma 4. You can see here that Desmos automatically shows the value of 3 plus 4, so the function is working. Okay, now that we see how functions work, let's step it up a bit. I want a function that calculates if there is a collision between the player and some rolling enemy. We can use the collision detection equation we developed in the video on screen now, but how should we add that into the function? The first step is to find the constants. These are values I've hard-coded into the game and will not change from one enemy to another. These are things like the player size, player position, and the time variable. It might seem counterintuitive to call the time variable a constant, and it is, but time won't have a different value for different enemies, so it's effectively a constant. Now let's look at enemy-specific values. These are the starting x and y positions of the enemy. We will need to pass these in as inputs to the function. Now if we call our function c sub r, meaning the collision of the rolling enemy, we can add in the inputs and basically just drop in the equation we developed before. This is basically it for the function. Here you can see what the old and new collision detection lines look like. I would use the same trick to clean up the drawing of the enemies, but honestly, there's a bigger problem than just the prettiness there. I've been suggested to try a culling technique on the game to improve performance. Culling is the deloading of objects that the camera cannot see. So if we draw a box that represents the player's view, we can deload everything outside this box since the player can't even see it anyways. The problem is that even with this technique, about 4 to 5 circles can make the game slow down a lot which is possible to be loaded in the player's view at one time. You can see that as the enemies appear on screen, the game starts to lag. This is a major problem considering that I can't deload enemies in view to improve performance. Circles are just really slow to draw. There are a few solutions to this. The first one is that we can approximate circles with polygons with a lot of sides. As I mentioned before, polygons render faster than equations, so this would fix the lag at the expense of making the code less readable, and collision would break a little bit. The second one is that I can replace the enemies with images. Images are also faster than equations, so that would fix the lag. I could also make the enemies have different faces, which would be pretty neat. I would rather use images, as polygons are kind of a mess to set up and less flexible. Here I have a quick demo of my images instead of equations. You can see how similar it looks to the original setup. The shocking thing is you can't even tell which footage is which. In fact, I actually reversed the labels. Let's do a performance test. Level 3 is good because of how many circles are on screen at once. That was a pretty clear win for the images. I replaced the equations with images pretty easily, too. All I did was go into paint and draw a circle, import it into Desmos, and move the x and y offset functions into the position field so it moves in the exact same way. With these optimizations done, it's time for decorations and better UI, but I think that's a topic for the next video. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my beautification of the game. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time!